and welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911. It is a pleasure to be with you today. This is your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer. My husband's not here today, but I'm here to talk to you about matters of the heart. As Christians, it's important that we guard our hearts because our heart, it's like the the center of who we are and we need to guard it in the Lord in order to have a walk of victory, a walk that pleases the Lord. But before we begin the program, I want to pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. We thank you, Lord, because we just celebrated your resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus. And, and the victory is in the resurrection of Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross, that you paid for our sins, for our transgressions, and, and, and then you, you died on the cross, and then you rose on the third day and were resurrected, and we have the victory in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, as I teach today in, about these matters of the heart, Lord, I ask you to anoint my words to help me and to guide me through your Holy Spirit to say what it's, your Holy Spirit is guiding me to say so that the people are touched and blessed, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, um, I spoke about the resurrection. It's so important that we understand what the resurrection means. Jesus was resurrected on the third day, and that is the victory. Amen. And Dexter and I um, were in Jerusalem last week, and we had the blessing of visiting the garden tomb. And he's not there. He is risen. He is at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me. Amen. And it, he's not dead. He's alive. Our God is alive. And he's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me and loving us. Amen. So it's important that we understand that we need to have a heart that follows Jesus, a heart that wants to know him and follow him in the power of the resurrection. So this is what this program is about. It's about having a heart. What kind of heart do you have? Do you have a heart that longs for the things of God? It is a matter of the heart. Amen. That is the title. So to begin the program, I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And I'm going to read that to you. Amen. Praise God. It says, praise the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Wow. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all all your soul and with all your strength. Amen. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Wow. Impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. Wow. So look how important it is that we, we guard the commandments of, of the Lord that he says, to tell them about, to impress them on our children, to let them know, to talk about them at home, to put them on a, so it is important, it's a matter of the heart. Look, it says, love your God above all things, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Amen. So that means that God has to be our number one priority. Knowing him, following him, okay? So one of the first things is we have to guard that in our heart and love the Lord with our soul. Because God wants fellowship with us. And he gives us that command that we are to be attached to him. We have to take a step towards him and love him and attach to him to seek him. Amen? We need, it is his desire that his word be in our hearts, okay? And, and it's so important um, that these commands are in our heart. And where are these commands? In the word of God, amen? So, and look how it's activated. The activation of that, that the commands are in our hearts are in chapter 7, 8, and 9. Impress them on your children. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. That means meditate on my word as you go around your, your daily life, right? And, and when you lie down and when you get up, make sure that, you are, that they're in your heart, that, you med that they become part of you, okay? So because... If you meditate on these things, on what the Word of God says, it's in your heart. And then that will impact, will transform the way that you walk on a daily basis. Amen? That is amazing. Now, if we go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, let's go there. We're going to read. Again, this is so important. Look. For the word of God is living and active. So the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Wow. So when... The Word of God, when we read it, it changes us. It uh, transforms us. It penetrates us. And it helps us to walk in the fullness of what God has for us. And I understood that. Um, I was, um, I, like I said, we were in Israel last week. And one of the things that Dexter and I did is we walked the Via Dolorosa, right? And... Um, we went to the place where they, 39 stripes on Jesus' back. And as I was sitting in the church of the, where they, the flagellation, I remember the word of God where it says, by his stripes we are healed. And immediately that word impregnated me. And I started praying, Lord, I want you to heal the people that I know that are sick. Lord, I want you to heal my heart. Lord, touch. And, 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 and the word just took, it became alive in my heart because I was there, but, but the Holy Spirit it brought it to me. And it, it, it transformed me inside. It was like a new revelation of what God had done, of the benefits that we are healed through his death and through his, the resurrection of him. And the only way that that could have happened was that I had read the word and I knew what he had done. So when I was in that place, the Holy Spirit brought it back to me and it activated a series of wonderful prayers for people that were sick. So the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and it just changes you. It penetrates you. Um, and it helps you to enter God's rest. When we know the word, we enter God's rest because we are completely submitted to him. And, and, and then it's like, um, it's like a scalpel. The word of God is like a scalpel. It goes into your spirit and it changes and it takes out and it 
transform your heart. Um, it cuts away the spiritual corruption that you might have, and it brings healing and life into us. When we submit to him by faith and by reading the word, it's so important, it's so amazing what God can do, amen? It's, it's amazing. I want to read to the, you this. This is what's for my commentary in my Bible. It says, God's word can penetrate our lives and inner being so precisely that it discerns and defines the obscure dividing line between soul and spirit. God's word awakens and strengthens his life and our spirit and exposes our selfishness. Um, and it's so important when that part of us conflicts with the life of God is developing within our spirit. So when we read the word, what happens is those things of the flesh and the, the Lord just takes them away, convicts us of them, and then we begin to walk in the spirit, no longer being selfish and unloving and all those things. It changes us. It, it transforms us from the inside out, and we become a new creature in Christ. Amen? And, and I want to keep reading this. I want to read it again for emphasis. For the word of God is living and active. It changes, okay? Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of your heart. When you're reading the word and it convicts you, you're, you're not doing this right, you need to repent. And, and, and it sh it's like a mirror that shows us what we're doing wrong and then we need to have a submitting humble heart and change our ways. Amen. And look at this. Look in verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Or we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. We have a wonderful high priest that when we read the word and the word st starts actively convicting us, showing us how we should walk, um, showing us what areas of our lives we need to change, we don't need to hide. We, we need to go to him, to Jesus, and say, Jesus, forgive me. Help me to change. Because he is a wonderful high priest sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting to help you and intercede for us in our time of help and in our time of need. Amen. He is amazing. As we were in Israel this week, um, Dexter's father passed away. He went to heaven. And, and as we were there, we were praying, Lord, we, we, we don't want him to be by himself when he goes to heaven. And we don't want him to suffer. And the Lord was so faithful. He was not by himself when he went to heaven. He was read a scripture, he smiled, and he went on to be with the Lord. And I'm not going to lie to you. It was a very painful and a hurtful experience. But I experienced the Lord Jesus Christ being the high priest because we went to him and we said, Lord, we need your help. We need your comfort. We need your peace. And because we're so far away and we can't do anything. And the Lord, we just prayed and he answered our prayers and he gave us peace and he comforted us. He even gave me a dream about Grandpa going to heaven. And the peace of God was with us. And he was there in our time of need and in our time and we needed help. He is wonderful. He is the best friend you can have. But you need to have a heart that searches for him and that wants to draw near to him. 
He is our best friend, Jesus. And we have to follow him and know him in the power of the resurrection. He is a God of love. In our time of most suffering, he was there for us. He is amazing. I un I've understood and I felt the peace that passes all understanding last week. And it's a matter of the heart. Is your heart willing to surrender to the Lord? Are you willing to seek him? In a deeper walk that when that time of need comes and that time that you need grace comes, you know who he is and you can look to him and find that comfort. It is amazing what he can do for you, how much he loves you, what he did for you. He died on the cross so that you might have life and everlasting life. Amen. So it is amazing what God does. I want to go to Psalm 37. It is an amazing psalm, and I'm sorry I'm crying. But, you know, I, me and Dexter always say that we don't preach and we don't teach we have what we have not experienced in our lives. If you need peace and you need shalom, go to Jesus and you'll see. Look, in Psalm 37, when you seek him with all your heart, when you look to him, to follow him and know him by reading the scriptures, by meditating on his word, by writing his commandments in your heart. Look what happens. It says, delight in yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And to delight yourself is to means to find your greatest joy and satisfaction in your personal relationship with God. Those who delight in the Lord enjoy a sense of nearness to God and they take great pressure in living by the truth of God's word. That's what it means to delight in him, living in his truth. Amen. And look what happens. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And, and what does that mean, Sister Marisol, that he will give you the desires of your heart? He will answer the deepest cries of your heart. If their desires are in line with what the scripture says. So this weekend, you know, I, my, the desire of my heart was for my husband to walk in peace and be comforted by the Lord. And he answered that. My husband is at peace and resting in God because I put, we put God first. And he answered that prayer. Amen. And when we dislike ourselves in God and find our greatest satisfaction in pursuing God's purposes for our lives, God himself places the right kinds of desires within our hearts and then he fulfills them. Amen. So when we seek him, then he downloads those desires in our hearts that align with his word and then we walk in them. That means we begin to walk in his perfect will. Amen. And that is such a blessing. And look, let's, let me continue reading. It says, commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. That's a condition. What do we have to do? Commit your ways to the Lord. And when you commit your ways to something, that means you, you follow what God says in his word. You are obedient to what his word says. You are obedient, okay? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And look what it says. Commit your ways to the Lord in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Amen. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their schemes. So when, when the Lord is in your life, he will make your righteousness shine. 
like the noonday sun. It will be evident everywhere you go. You will be a blessing. You will be a source of blessing to your, to your family. You will walk righteously. You will be a witness to Jesus. Amen. And it is so amazing. So it is so important that we give ourselves to the Lord and that we delight in him and that we give him the desires of our heart. Because when we bring him to him, then he what? He answers the desires of our hearts when we walk in righteousness. So the problem is our heart, right? Because as you know, man is wicked. We have a sinful nature. So let's look at, at, at the solution. What do, we do, what, do, how, what do we do to change our hearts? What can we do? Let's go to Jeremiah 31. 31 to 34. Amen. Okay. My bifocals. Okay, let's see. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Amen. Praise God. It says, The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it in their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Wow. So look what the solution is. A new covenant. A new covenant through Jesus the Messiah, who came and dies on the cross for us. So then when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, what happens? He will puts the law in our minds and writes it in our hearts. And look, I will be their God and they will be my people. Wow, amen. So, so a distinctive feature of this new covenant is that God's gift to us through Jesus is a new heart and a transformed nature. A new inner spiritual character in Jesus to those who surrender to Jesus and accept them as his Lord and Savior he gives them a new heart and is a result of the Holy Spirit working in our lives and transforming our lives amen um, and the Holy Spirit enables us to know Jesus and to follow Jesus in the power of the resurrection. We are no longer slaves. We are no longer slaves to sin. Amen. We can walk in victory. And let's look at, at Hebrews 8, 9 to 13. Amen. This is amazing. I love this scripture. It says, It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them out of the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. Oh, I already read you that one. Amen. Um, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time declares the law, the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man, or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord because they will all know me from the least to them of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness. Amen. And will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made 
the first one obsolete and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. So here we see how the Lord is discussed, how the word of God is teaching us that the new covenant is much better than the old covenant and that this new covenant that is being established by Christ is much superior to the old. Amen. So it's important that we understand that we are now in a covenant through Christ Jesus of grace. For Jesus came to save the world. Amen. To provide redemption from all of us. We have to accept him as Lord and Savior. Amen. But we are no longer subject to the law. Amen. This is by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let's go to 9, 13 through 15. And this is amazing. It says, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself unblemished to God, cleans our consciousness from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance. Now that he has died has a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Amen. So Jesus now becomes the mediator, you know. Before, in the Old Testament, in order for sins to be forgiven, there had to be sacrifices in the temple. And people would bring bulls or dolls, and, and there would be sacrifice on the altar, okay? And, and in the altar, God would receive those sacrifices. But no longer is there a temple because the temple was destroyed by the Romans. So even if you want to be sanctified by the law, you cannot be sanctified or redeemed by the law because no one can fulfill all the requirements of the law because there's no temple to make sacrifices. So now we have a mediator in Christ Jesus, the new covenant. He came and he died on the cross. He paid for all our sins, atoned, redeemed us, and here is saying that the blood of bulls used to clean people outwardly. How much more is the Son of God who died for us, who was without blemish, he will clean us completely. All we have to do is, is with our heart, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Again, it's a matter of the heart. How is your heart? Do you have a hardened heart? Or do you have a soft heart? It's so important. You have to guard your heart. And, and you have to ask God to show you. Lord, how is my heart? Help me to have a heart that wants to long for you, that seeks you in spirit and truth. Lord, do I have bitterness in my heart? Do I have unforgiveness in my heart? And he will work in your heart. And the way to do that is to read the scriptures. And the scriptures will start cleaning you, showing you, ministering to you, taking all that pain away, giving you peace. The scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit will especially come alive and touch those areas of your life that God needs to touch, transform, amen? And it is so amazing. It is amazing, amazing, amazing. I want to, and he will give you clean waters. Let's go to Ezekiel, okay? Let's go to Ezekiel, let's see. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. It says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Hallelujah. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from 
all your idols. I will give you a new heart. God wants to give you a new heart today when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Wow. Amen. So here God promises to restore Israel, not only um, physically, but also spiritually. Amen. And what is the word says that the true Jew is that one who's accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And the restoration involves giving you a new heart. Amen. One that is tender and receptive and will respond to God's word. Amen. It's not only is he going to give you a new heart, but he also is going to give you the Holy Spirit to be in you. Amen. And this special work in God comes as a part of the new covenant that he's provided for us through the sacrifice that was and, and of Christ Jesus on the cross by, by Christ did on the cross. Amen. That's why the cross is so important. Amen. Because there is our victory. Amen. Glory to God. I want to go now to Hebrews. Clean water. Amen. And look, it's in the New Testament to the clean water. In Hebrews 10. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. And here we have a call to persevere. Amen. It says, therefore, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from our guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Wow. Wow. Amen. So look at this. We don't have a guilty conscience anymore. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus because our bodies have been washed with what? Pure water. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, we have confidence. Confidence in what? To enter the most holy. Okay. In the time of the Old Testament, only the high priest can enter the holy of holies. And they had to put a bell on his leg because they weren't confident if God had accepted their sacrifices. So they used to, and they used to tie to his leg a rope in case he died in there so they could pull him out. But hear what God does. Through Christ Jesus, we can go with complete confidence into the holies of holies, because we know that we know that we know with certainty that Jesus has atoned for our sins. And here the word confidence, right, is the word parnesia, which happens four times in the book of Hebrews. And it means a bedrock belief, a solid foundation of faith. So we know that we know that we know that in Christ Jesus, we have salvation, we have mercy, we have grace, we have access to all the promises, we have healing, we are more than conquerors, amen, amen. You know, so we go to the throne of grace with confidence, but also we need to understand that it's a bold assurance that, but it's humble, 
because we were given access to the holy of holies, but what Christ did on the cross, not because of our works. So when we, are, we go with boldness, but we go with what? With a humble heart. Because it's not because of our own righteousness. It's not because of our works. It is because of what Christ did on the cross for us. Amen? So, so we have the freedom to go into the Holy of Holies. And we have... The, uh, we are authorized to go into the Holy of Holies by what Christ did for us on the cross. Amen. Because of, of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And that access was not available in, in the time of the Old Testament. Amen. And when the old, old covenant, it is something that we have attained because of the sacrifice of Jesus. It is amazing. And, and you know, when... Jesus died, the veil that separated people from the holies of holies to or from top to bottom, which was a sign to show us that because of Christ, body was turned through his suffering and death, which gives us what? Spiritual freedom and access to God. And now that means that we with gratitude and confidence can come to God in prayer. Amen. So it is so important that we draw near to God. Look at, it says here, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. So draw near to God. But Sister Marisol, how do we draw near, near to the Lord? Wow. Well, by having faith but faith that is sincere in believing in God with all our heart, in trusting our life to his care, relying on him for him to help us and to give us strength, and trusting in his goodness completely, completely trusting in him. Amen? And, and by coming to God, through faith in Christ, you need to understand that you find salvation, mercy, grace, help, spiritual growth and development, and cleansing. We need to understand all those things. And we need to understand that and appropriate those things in our lives. Amen. And, and when we come to Christ, we need to understand that we need to read the word and we need to meditate on the word and, 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 and ask God to show us the things in our hearts and the things that the patterns of our life that do not please him. And then the Lord will start changing them. But as he shows us, we need to surrender to what he's showing us and repent and turn from our ways. It is so, so important. He is so faithful and trusting him and knowing that he is a merciful God and that he's there waiting to pour out his goodness towards us. And, and part of that, brothers and sisters, is forgiving the people that have done things to us not having bitterness, not walking in envy, jealousy, and all these things. We need to start getting rid of that stuff. All that stuff is a matter of the heart. Amen? And it is so important. So, and what are other ways, Sister Marisol, that we can draw near to God? We can draw near to God, too, in prayer, by going to Him in prayer, by reading the Word, praying to the Lord, and, and having communion and companionship with Christ. So prayer is a way of communicating with God. You know, when I first was a Christian, I, I, was, I would go to the Lord and pray. Pray, 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 pray. And I never took time in my prayer time to listen to what he was telling me. And as I became more mature, I realized that I needed to 
have a relationship and when a relation you speak and you listen so as I became more mature in the Lord I had fellowship with him companionship with him and I gave him the time to speak to me through the word or through um, through promptings or in my mind or through a symbol I said Lord do you or I even as Lord what do you want to say to me today I used to open the Bible and just point at my finger but is God are you is God speaking to you if he wants to have fellowship with us and it's so important that we seek him in prayer by reading the word by seeking him and to know him to, to follow him in the power of the resurrection if you know somebody and you're following them, you know them intimately. You know what they like. You, don't, you know what they don't like. You know all about them. So do you know all about your Lord and Savior? Every day I try to seek him and, and know him more and understand him, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Amen. And it is so important that we have a powerful prayer life. You know, and... Um, I did a teaching on prophetic intercession and prophetic intercession it's amazing because when you it's amazing because when you pray God shows you what his plans and purposes are and then you pray them back to him and then he and you're praying in his perfect will so are you praying and asking God Lord, what are your plans and your purposes that you have for me? What do you want me to do in my life? What, what, are, you, what are you showing me? So you can pray, Lord, help me to be a better teacher. Help me to be a better wife. So do you know what God's will for your life is? Amen. So you can pray back to him and say, Lord, help me to fulfill my calling and my mission and what you called me to be. That is so important, so important. Um, my, I said, like I mentioned in the program, my father-in-law passed away. But one of the ways the Lord helped me with that was he gave me a dream like two, one or two days before he passed away. And I, I dreamed that I was in a spaceship. And the spaceship, Grandpa was in it and Derek was in it and Derek is the youngest member of the Pelzer family and Grandpa is the oldest member of the Pelzer family and I was in the spaceship and um, Grandpa was driving the spaceship and it's so amazing because the the spaceship was flying and I knew that Dexter knew where I was that I was with Grandpa he and it was a dream and in the dream, the first place that we went to in this beautiful spaceship was to the Holy of Holies. And I remember that the little door was like that and the spaceship went sideways and went in to the Holy of Holies. And then after that, um, it went to the Sea of Galilee and it went into the deepness of the Sea of Galilee. Amen. And then after that, we went through Masada, which is a a place where the revolt ended, you know, of the Jewish people against the Romans. And it was a place where people rather be free. It was a place of courage, right? So, and I was, I woke up and I shared the dream with my friends and I said, I think the Lord is speaking to me that even if grandpa passes away, I should be rejoicing and, and they said well why because I didn't want to I wanted to speak worth of life so I didn't say that the, that the Lord was kind of preparing me for him going to heaven so as I ponder and pray with my friends and my husband about the dream it was like we enter the Holy of Holies and it was the place of salvation amen with the Lord pay for our, our sins and for our salvation. And it was the Lord showing me that grandpa was safe and that there was a promise that the generations of our family will be saved. And then we went to the Sea of Galilee, you know, where Jesus called the disciples and he taught at the Mount of the Beatitudes and 
he lived in Capernaum, which, and, and, which is there too, and where the miracles of the multiplication of the bread were. And we went into the deepness of the Sea of Galilee, which the Lord was showing me that the, the grandpa had a deep intimacy with God and that he knew him. Not only was he saved, but that he knew the Lord deeply and intimately and that he fellowshiped with him. And then we went to Masada, and it's a place where people have courage and people face life. So it was the Lord telling me, your father-in-law, your papa is safe. He had an intimate walk with me, and I want you to have courage. See, God is so faithful. When we put him first and our heart is in him, he, he prepares us and leads us, you know, and He's so faithful. He shows us things. So, and he keeps us on that track. Like, don't worry, my child. I am with you in the good times and in the bad times. I am a faithful God, and I love you. Just turn your heart to me. Amen? Just turn your heart to me. He's amazing. And... I can truly say that I have the peace of God and that in Him I have found the comfort and peace that I need to walk in this time because God is so good. He's so amazing. You know, that I know that I know that I have the confidence that my father-in-law is with the Lord Jesus Christ and that I'm going to one day see Him. Amen and be with him eternally. So it is amazing, and that's what God can do for you. No matter what your situation is, the Lord is there to bless you, to protect you, to comfort you, and to help you in any way that you can, that he can, and that, that is according to his will, amen? So why don't we go to Romans 6, 1 through 14. This is another one that I like. Romans 6. Amen. I like this. I like this one a lot. Amen. He's amazing. Oh, thank you, Father. We just praise you. We worship you. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. Amen. What should we say then? Should we go on sinning so that grace may increase no just because our god is a graceful god we 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 need to walk in holiness amen by no means we died to sin how can we live in it any longer or don't you know that all of us were baptized into christ jesus were baptized into his death amen we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, hallelujah, to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Amen. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our all self was so crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin we do not have to be slaves to sins anymore because anyone who has died has been free from sin you have been free from sin when you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. We need to live our lives in such a matter that we know that we are no longer slaves to sin. 
we had died to it. Amen. Hallelujah. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Amen. So what we, it is so important that we understand and that we count ourselves dead to sin. And you know, this is a basic principle in chapter 6 of Romans. Um, that w the believer is both united with Christ in his death and his resurrection. So if you are a true follower of Christ, you died to sin. Amen. A fact that is reflected in several areas of your Christian experience. Amen. And you need to understand that. You, if you're, you're still walking in sin, you need to stop. And you need to repent. And you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to conquer that sin. Let me say that again. You need to stop and to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Amen? To help you. You need to be deliberate and specific and transparent and tell the Lord in which areas you're weak in. You need to tell him. You need to tell him. You need to understand that sin is not active in your life. And, and being dead to sins means that the influence and temptations that may have once caused you to give in no longer have control over you because you are unresponsive unto these things. But, when you, but you need to have the Holy Spirit help you. The Holy Spirit will help you. Amen. You need to resist when the temptation comes, the thought comes. I resist you in the name of Jesus. And you need to be deliberate. And you need to make a willful choice not to feed your carnality, your flesh. Instead, you must feed yourself spiritually and exercise godly discipline by reading the word. By, by praying, by seeking God, okay, by dying to yourself. And let me give you an example. I used to weigh 300 and something pounds. And the Lord said, Marisol, gluttony is a sin. So I said, Lord, how am I going to lose weight? And he said, ask me. So I asked the Holy Spirit to help me to eat better, to exercise, and 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 to help me not to eat things that were not healthy for me. And as a result, I started exercising. I started eating properly. And as a result, I lost over 100 pounds. My diabetes went away. I am the healthiest I've ever been. But I needed to resist the temptation. I needed to ask the Holy Spirit to help me, OK? And he did. He's faithful, and he can help you in every area of your life that you need help with. I want to go to Psalm 51.10. And it's a matter of the heart. Are you seeking God with all your heart? Okay. 51.10. It, I, it, I love this. It says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Wow. So we need to understand that we need pure hearts. And we need to confess to the Lord the things that don't please him and repent them from this. And we need to have an openness to him. So, and, and say, Lord, I need your help desperately. And he will, he's there. He's there to bestow his grace and his help to you. Amen. And it's amazing. Amazing. And I want to go to, let's see, Romans 8.15. You know. Mm -hmm. 
And then we're going to pray. Romans 8, 15. Mm -hmm. Let me go here. Listen to this. Starting verse 13. 8, 13, it says, For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. So if I kept the overeating, I was going to die. Well, because, uh, die spiritually, okay? If you're committing sins, you're, not, you're going to die spiritually. That means you're not going to go to heaven, okay? But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death, to death the misdeeds of the body you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. So if you are a child of God, and you need your heart to be changed, to seek him, just go to him with confidence to the throne of gray and say, Abba, Papa, I need you so much. I need you to change my heart. I need you to give me a tender heart. I need you to give me a heart that wants to seek you in spirit and truth. I need you to help me in my time of need. But you need to go to him and trust in him. And the first step is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Then you will get adopted into this wonderful family. And then you have all the promises in the word. And then you can walk in peace. You can walk in no matter what comes at you. Because your Lord will give you the peace that passes all understanding. Then you can conquer. Be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You can walk in joy. Amen. You have so many beautiful things. But again, it is a matter of the heart. It is a matter of the heart. So I want to pray that you have a heart that will want to love the Lord above all things and that you would accept Jesus and love him and know him and follow him in the power of the resurrection. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Father, I ask you to work in our hearts, to give us hearts that that thirst for you, that long for you, that want to know you intimately, that want to read your word, that want to be obedient to you, that, that hearts that, that want to follow you and know you in the power of the resurrection, Jesus. Father, we just thank you because you give us a new heart, a new heart, a heart of sons. Father, and we want to walk in, 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 in the fullness of what you have for us. We want to walk in obedience. We want to walk loving you. We want to walk in your perfect will, Father. Father, we just love you and we just praise you in the name of Jesus. This has been your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Marisol Peltzer, and my husband, Reverend Dexter Peltzer. We will see you next week. God bless you. And remember, is your heart longing for the Lord? It should. God bless you and see you next week. Amen.